this tutorial, we're going to build full scenery from beginning to end and utilize several techniques we learned in previous tutorials. So let's go ahead and begin from creating our overall environment. I want to load it and you can preload it just a building or for example, right here we have a preset already like a building and plants. So I'm just going drag and drop inside. You can do this way or if you want to load it on a center, just double click. That will preload our scenario. You can notice this environment, it's contained multiple objects. So okay, let me kind of expand it. You can see we have it, some vines inside and other things. The one thing what I find sometimes maybe kind of rotating when you go around and you click on those, you don't necessarily want to have all these highlights happening. You can always go in your Cine browser and enable or disable. You can always hide all of them or some of the portions, but be careful when, when you do this. For example, if I'm going to hide all these plants, maybe accept the crypt, so all of them, and I'm going to render after you'll notice they will be hidden as well. So I want to make them visible, but I don't want them enabled to highlight. So for this, I can just go with arrow selections and uncheck this box and leave some of them enabled. Currently, I don't want any of this selection is be enabled to select, uh, click on this. So I'm going on top with preloaded and uncheck. Okay, also let's go inside the crypt and uncheck there. Okay, now we don't have the crypt and we can. I check some IV. So you notice we cannot select them. However, we still some fans enable select, but overall, right here we have our scenario and it's one be this kind of irritating selection going back and forward. Again, if you want modified, you just can go back, re-enable selection and modify this way. So right here, we kind of preset our gate. So let's go play some person side and I'm going to select figures. We'll go to the people, male, and let's select um, Genesis figure. So male figure right here. We'll just preload it as default. Okay, you'll notice it's kind of sink down. The problem with this because it is dropped to the ground, but our ground is a little bit too low. So sometimes what happen? Because this area is high. And if we actually move up and using options to um okay, let's move him forward a little bit. Okay. And if for example I'm going to drop on a floor control d okay he going way too down so i don't need it this i want him to be placed just on this porch so i'm going to bring up down and we'll just readjust this way for now we have some other tricks we can do but we will look on them in a little bit more advanced for now just using your navigation that's very good practice also to readjust and move it kind of positioning him right here okay let's next add a close to him and does support fully drag and drop system as well as a positioning by drag and drop so right here we have our figures let's select him go all and i'm going to browse wardrobe so you can notice we have already some predefined but i want to use it some already pre-created like right here we have it piece of wardrobe so I'm just take already preset one drag and drag and drop on him so right here you can see we applied full dress the drag and drop is very nice options because it's also will link to the parent and child so next let's add hair and right here we have some lumberjack hair we'll go take this drag and drop on his head Okay, we could modify also hair and we can do this by selecting from basic hair or just click in our browser yeah, so we go right here and now we can go inside the shaping Oops, okay let me go ahead expand it it's collapsed okay we can select hair okay we can go to 
alum. So we'll take this one, apply it as greatly a bit better look. And just double time click so it will apply hair position. So it's already look kind of nice, but overall, same way you can apply additional styles to the hair when it's created. So I think right now it's time we can add some pose to our figuring as we inside the shape. So I'm going to select Genesis figuring. Okay, we'll go shape. Okay, let's go inside um, shaping. So we'll go to pose and animate at this point. Actually, before this, let's go add some props so we can see how we can move it. I'm going to right click, clear selection. Okay, we'll go to the smart content. Let's go inside the props and right here we can select just any prop like bench will work. So notice what I do when I'm take this bench and drag and hold on alt or option. Now I have this marker. It's helped me to place to right. So I'm going to place right here bench. Okay, we'll go to rotate this bench. So let maybe rotate this way. And we can also just readjust our bench by bringing a little bit forward and slightly up. So we're all just showing as example, we can take additional and place it on specific area. Okay, so we add this one. Let's go now work on a pose. We'll select male figuring inside the pose and animate. You notice as we selected the figure in our content is displaying the pose we can use it. So we can create a basic um, pose action kind of. Okay, I think this is will work. You can try to play around as well. You can select and use it. On our presets, you can go inside and modify maybe like position head, you know, readjusting slightly. Okay, I think this will work well. Okay, next step after we're done with posing and readjusting, let's create lighting and camera. So we'll go to next action step. And in this action step, I want to create first the camera. So next we will preview through the camera and we'll also add some lights probably. So let's go to select camera is selected and we'll go to add a camera. Okay, we'll just leave it as camera one for now. And you notice camera it's pointing from different angles. So we want to switch our perspective view to the camera view. Okay right here in a camera view we can readjust our center how we can see and maybe even go a little bit more down okay we can position i'm just positioning so i can see a little bit of the bench the person again we can select him and just maybe even slightly more rotate towards us. Okay. We also have it all this back scenery kind of enabled. Okay, I think th this will be okay for render for now. Um, one other thing um, right now it's a generic light. So if I'm going and let me actually do this one add render tab here, so it will be very fast. I can click in the rendering and you can see all what we have. It's a, this ambient light. So I want to add more interesting dramatic light as well. Right here we have a background and it's nothing on this. So we need to add backdrop as well. And because it is like a dark crypt, maybe increase some lighting on the back and made lights going on him as well. So let's switch to the perspective view because I don't want it modify my camera view at this point. Okay, I'll zoom out a little bit. Okay, and now I want to add lights. So we'll go switch to the light tab in our light and cameras. We already have some presets. However, what I want to do, it's created my own um, light options. 
So we're going to go create. And let's create a new point light. Nice things about the creating point light, you notice we instantly can see if it's how visible or not visible light will be. So, okay, we'll go to editor and let's increase a little bit on this. So right here we have just slightly, okay, kind of a little bit add glowing on the back. We can also try to increase. Okay, that is looking okay. And next, let's go create another distant light. Okay, that is will add some shadows and effect. And I will take distant light and should want make a little bit darker. Okay. And because if you remember, we switched to our camera, we kind of closer, maybe add two spotlights on the side. Somewhere right here, maybe a red kind of yellow light. So let's go create um, new linear point lights. Okay, so we'll create two of them. Put one a little bit out. Okay, and we'll put it in in this corner again we're not necessarily can be we'll see this light but it will provide for us kind of nice lighting and let's switch this to the warmer color kind of almost like a flame or something maybe creating okay we can increase a little bit fallout so we'll spread a little bit more and pop up an intensity okay we can, uh, as it's created lights, we can always create it. Okay, so right here, let's add another light. So we'll go to create new linear light. We'll have it light two. Okay, we'll select it right here. Move it out as well. Uh, let's bring it up. Sometimes it's hard to lose it, so okay. At this point, we'll move it again in a corner, okay, and we'll switch to the kind of reddish light. Let's take it slightly down, okay. At this point, we can switch to our camera view and let's preview render. Okay, we can see it's creating a nice effect already. Some shadows need to apply and a backdrop. So to work on a backdrop, what I want to do, it's actually going to the window. Okay, we'll go to the paint and we'll just select environment one. Okay, this is a little bit changed from previous DAS Studio. So they just move it before it used to be an edit menu. An action type will go backdrop and right here on the angle we'll go click and let's select browse i have some pre-render collection so i'll just select one and if you purchase this tutorial you will have some backdrops included with clouds and everything so you can use it as well in your scenery okay well done on this case and let's um kind of maybe tweaking a little bit more with lighting so I want to select distant light and take intensity kind of more dramatic effect a bit more down. Okay, we'll have it this linear light. Let's increase, see how it will bring to us. Okay, also let's pop up with the shadows. And it's kind of hard because we have shadows coming from two lights. So we'll say softness intensity okay, i think it's look okay next we'll go inside the render and again we'll want to switch to the camera view and let's like we're using currently 3d light engine so i'm just going to check progress render is off okay we'll leave it as default bucket again same simple link this is all quality increasing and um same for this we'll leave gamma one 
Okay, I think it's about right for the test right now. So I'm going to click and render to test. Okay, so you can see we have a very nice look. Actually, I want to come a little bit closer on a person. So we'll go to our lighting cameras. We can switch this way or we always can expand our bar. Okay, select camera. And we can go in parameters for our selected camera. So for example, we can come closer or scale. Okay, like right here we have it. Let's bring focus here. We'll go to rotation. Maybe bring kind of instability a little bit. Okay, adjust properties. Okay, let's go to our transforming dimensions. Okay, we also let's go inside this camera. Okay, and we'll go inside the dimensions. Let's enable and we can pre use um, some already presets. So for example, let's make wide um, full HD, so resolution. Okay, as well, let's go back on a camera and we'll just reposition slightly. Okay, I'm going to parameters for the camera. Okay, let's go to focal lens just a little bit more close up. And kind of bring, I want to see a little bit of the lighting kind of on the side maybe. I think right here will be interesting. So we have a nice lighting preview. Okay, at this point we can go inside the running. And you can see right here we have our frame that is displayed even we preview before but because we selected our um, frame so it will be just adding as well let's go ahead and render okay so let's go ahead and select camera one be sure it's the full HD render okay the also because our focus is not currently set, so I want to disable depth of field. And we can also kind of modify focal distance if you need it to have more depth of field. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. I think this is about right. So let's go ahead and render our view. Right here, you can see we have images, which is rendered very nicely. We have good color warm lighting got like almost from fire on a side going we could play a little bit more with the lighting tweaking or you can take them on camera okay if you want in this case and we can even kind of zoom out create a different scenery and again render this way so you can play around a little bit more and see which one will come up a little bit better again even it's render right here we can actually have it a little bit more in our view so it's done so we can kind of move around to preview and i hope it's helped you to create just um create new model play with lights play play with settings and uh, thank you for watching this tutorial from Geek at Play Studio. And please remember this does no web is www.geekatplay.com.